Well, it's an announcement today from Power Systems for the new Power 8 machines, and we thought you'd like to have a little look around our own S824 model rather than looking at the rather dry text of the announcement. We have an early ship program inside IBM, so we've actually had this machine for five months before it became generally available. That program is run by Marion and Deirdre. In the UK, in London, we have uh, Gareth Coates and myself. We get the machines, we test them, we feed a lot of information back about documentation changes, uh, what it's like to use, um, how good we really think it is, and some of the highlights of the features. So then we can tell people about how great these machines are. Very briefly, this S824 model is the S is for scale out, the 8 is for power 8, the 2 is for sockets, and the 4 is for the 4U high in the rack. This uh, throws a little bit because it actually makes sense as a product name. The machine can have up to 24 CPUs, ours are running about 4 and a bit gigahertz. We've got SMT8, so lots of programs can run. We can actually run 192 programs at the same time every clock cycle. And it can have up to a terabyte of memory. Now our machine is a little bit smaller than that. We've got 16 CPUs and a quarter of a terabyte. Inside the machine we can have uh, lots of disks. We can have the special solid state drives, um, eight of them in the front. And we can have 11 PCI slots. If you've got really good eyesight, you'll notice that I faked up the badge on the front in green there that says the S824. Because it's an early ship machine, we don't actually have the, the right badges as they come out uh, fairly near the announcement date. Let's look around the back. We can see here on the far left the new service processor has actually been upgraded, so it's a bit faster. This is, of course, running a power processor. Then we have some PCI slots. In the middle, we have these four power supplies and we can see a little bit of velcro around the handles and that's used to tie on the uh, mains leads so that they uh, can't fall out Then some more PCI slots on the right up above there's uh, vents that are used for the hot air to come out of the back of the machine okay this is our computer room the signage is due to our old manager Heather Charland we'll just have a look at this third rack here At the top here we have the two brand new HMCs and here we have our Power 8 machine, we've called it Emerald. It's a really nice trick, you just have to shake your hand at it and out it pops out of the rack. Look at that. Magic. On these Power 8 machines we actually lift the lid of the box that allows us to do hot plug adapter replacement. You simply pop this little lever up and you lift the top off. So now let's have a quick look around a machine called Emerald, by the way. That's why there's a label like that. At the front, we have four large fans. They have red handles, so you can do hot plug replacement of those, but no, no, don't do it now. You're meant to go through a maintenance procedure on the HMC before you actually pull them out. Further back here, we have the PCI cards on the left and right. In the middle, we have the four power supplies. Over here we have the two cards that are controlling the disks at the front. We can add an additional card in here for RAID functionality and high performance. And this is a blue handle, so this needs to be powered off before we go in here, but we can have a quick look as long as we don't fiddle about. Some nice labels to make sure we put things in the right place. This is the heat sink above the first Power 8 socket, and the one for the second. In between them we have the memory cards, which have the level 4 cache controller on them. This group of eight come with the first socket, and if you have a second power eight, then these are activated too. Further back we have the power supplies in the middle, and we have uh, some of the PCI slot threes here. This blue thing is called the vital product data, we tend to call it a lollipop. This has the ID of the machine in it. Below that we have the service processor and that little card, that I'm just pointing to allows the HMC connections and access to the service processor. Finally over here we have more PCI3 adapter slots. Some are 16 lane and some are 8. The black heat sinks there are for the fiber channel adapters. Gareth and I would like to point out our little dodge in putting the uh, cover back on. It's actually quite simple. These dots on the lid are rivets on the inside, they have to match up with these slots on the cabinet, and then we simply push the lever down. 
Finally, to slide into the rack, you raise these two levers, one on each side. Gareth is struggling because he's standing by the side of the machine. I eventually agreed to give him a hand and slide it in. Gareth's going to show us around the front of the machine. This is where the logo was set. We haven't got that at the moment. These are the two USB 3 ports. This is where our bank of uh, disks sits. These are two and a half inch disks. There's another bank in here if you take the option to have those and the solid state drives would fit in a caddy behind here. You lift off the uh, front, you need to give it a sharp tug once you've pushed in those blue tabs and there we go. So again the disks would fit an extra bank up the front and this would be where the solid state drives fit. The operator panel and diagnostics LEDs uh, just push out with a little button there. Much more positive action than we've seen in the past. Gareth's just going to pop the front back on the machine. You line up the lugs and the holes. And give it a sharp push. Let's have a look around the back of the machine here. And we'll move a bit closer. We can see it's got labelled up emerald, so we know it's the uh, same machine as the front. There are the air vents. We have the four power supplies. Um, each one's plugged in with a mains cable and Velcro around the handle so that it can't fall out. Just above it we have the two HMCs, we have the two yellow cables. These go round the storage cable arm and into the two HMC ports. We haven't got a switch in this case because we have a one-to-one -one connection. This is a look at the uh, cable arm. It does take up quite a lot of cabling but allows the machine to slide out the front for maintenance. One thing that Gareth pointed out to me is that the activity LEDs on your fibre channel ports flash four times and then pause. That means it's lost connection to the other end. In this case, it's just a loopback. And we'll close it back up. Now one little point before we finish, Derek Danes of our product support wanted us to show you that you are meant to bolt our machines into the rack for safety reasons, don't rely on little catches, just in case we have a major earthquake in London. But don't laugh, I've seen power machines still running on their sides as their racks have fallen over in Japan. Well that's a quick look around our new Power 8 machine. We're very impressed with the uh, technology and the engineering inside it. We've tried all sorts of uh, operating systems, the AXs and Linux. We haven't tried IBM I just we don't have the skills as other people testing that. Particularly like the SMT8, the single threaded performance is uh, a major boost. Lots of batch jobs are finishing in literally half the time. If you want to find more of my movies, then look at my YouTube channel, youtube.com, Nigel A.R. Griffiths. And if you liked the movie, why not click on the thumbs up?